young gobbos these days. All they do is bang around on their war drums. Whatever happened to good old fashioned generic goblin noise? Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Cart, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is another hot helping filmed in my garage at a socially distanced pace. We've got Martin playing Archangel Avacyn, keeping a mountain, a plains, Flamekin Zealot, Perforos, Command Tower, Charming Prince, and Justicar's Portal. Max is playing Snap Dax, not to be confused with Spandex, and keeps a Plateau, a Plains, Spike Shot Elder, Hammer of Nizan, Profane Procession, Crystalline Giant, and Sram. I have borrowed Max's Nyath of the Dire Hunt, keeping a Hanawar Battlements, Rata Heart of Keld, Forest, Mountain, Arlen Cord, Apex Allosaur, and Galta. And last but not least, Nick is rocking Ephemia the Cacophony, keeping Blessing of Leeches, Underworld Connections, Timurit Chosen from Death, Ragged Veins, Omen of the Dead, and Two Swamps. Max wins the die roll and starts us off. Max plays a Plateau, and he plays a turn one Spike Shot Elder. Nick plays a Swamp. I play a Forest. Martin plays a Plains and passes. Max also plays a Plains, but taps out for a Felwar Stone. Moving to combat, he hits Martin for one. Nick drops a Swamp and casts Timurit. For my turn, I play a Mosswarp Bridge which comes in tapped, and I hide away a card, passing to Martin as I pick. Martin plays a Mountain and casts a Wall of Omens. He draws as it enters. Max plays a Command Tower for turn, and three mana gets him a Crystalline Giant. He goes to combat, rolling for the ability, and ends up hitting Trample. Moving to Declare Attackers, he hits me for one with the Spike Shot Elder, and he passes turn. Nick plays a Swamp, and he taps out for an Underworld Connection, enchanting one of his tapped Swamps. He then passes to me. I draw, and play a Mountain. I cast Rata, Heart of Keld, and look at my top card. I then pass to Martin. Martin plays a Clifftop Retreat, and pays two for a Charming Prince. It comes in, and he flickers the Wall of Omens, drawing as it re-enters. Max plays a Plains for his turn, and casts Queen Marquesa, Long May She Reign. He moves to combat, rolling for the Crystalline Giant, who this time gets a first strike counter. He doesn't see any reason to attack, just yet anyway, and passes, drawing at the end of turn from Monarch. Nick draws, and activates the Underworld Connections, losing one life to draw a card. It's not a land, sadly, and he pays two mana to enchant the Crystalline Giant with Myra's Grasp, killing it in the process. He then passes to me. I draw for turn, and play a Forest. I play out Arling Cord, and I uptick her, and put it on Rata. I then swing Rata at Max, who takes the hit, and passes me the Monarch token. I then pass, and draw. Martin draws, and plays a tap Sacred Foundry. We then play past the Monarchy as he hits me for two with his Prince, and becomes a Monarch. He then passes, drawing, and discarding down to seven. Max makes an Assassin token on his upkeep because he and Queen Marquesa are not the Monarch. He casts Racto Signet as main phase, and then plays out Sram. Moving to combat, the Spike Shot Elder and Marquesa head at Arlen, while the Assassin goes at Martin. Before moving to blocks, Martin casts Justicar's portal, flickering his charming prince. It comes back, and it bounces his wall of omens, and gives him first strike, and he blocks the assassin. The wall comes back, and Martin draws a card. Nick plays a swamp for turn, and brings out Ephemia. We then see him casting Sinister Concoction, and Nick then passes, and at the end of turn, he exiles an enchantment from his graveyard with his commander's trigger. This has him making a 2-2 zombie token. I draw, and look at my top card. 
I play a mountain and cast Nyeth before passing to Martin. Martin plays a mountain for turn, and then casts Scourge of Valkus. The dragon enters, and its Enter the Battlefield trigger has it deal 1 to Max's Spike Shot Elder. Martin then passes, drawing at the end of turn. Max makes an Assassin token on his upkeep, and casts Hammer of Nizan in his main phase. He draws from Sram's trigger, and he attaches it to the Assassin token as it enters. We then see a Sacred Foundry coming out, and Max has it come in tapped. Max then goes to combat, swinging the Assassin at Martin, and connects. He becomes the Monarch once more, and passes, drawing at the end of turn. Nick also gets in on this action, tapping the Underworld connection to lose one life and draw a card. Nick draws for turn, and hits Max for two with his commander, in the air. He becomes the Monarch, and in his second main phase, taps the Swamp with a connection to lose one life and draw a card. Nick then activates the Concoction, destroying Stram, discarding a card, and milling one. He then moves to his end step, resolving a Femius trigger first, exiling an enchantment to make a token, and then draws from being Monarch, he moves to his cleanup step and has to discard down to 7 as he passes to me. I draw and play a forest. I pay 3 mana for a Farhaven Elf and drop an Uvenwald Tracker before going into my library to find a basic. Martin plays a Temple of Triumph, scrying 1 as it enters. He keeps it there and passes to Max. Max untaps and gets another Assassin token. He plays a Swamp for turn, and he goes to combat, hitting Nick for one with the Assassin, becoming the Monarch again. We then see Max cast Profane Procession, and he passes, drawing to the end of turn. Nick also gets in on the action, flashing out Omen of the Dead, and returning Erebos to hand as it enters. Nick untaps and draws for turn, and he takes one tapping his connections to draw a card. He finally finds that land, playing out of Cabal Coffers, and activates it to gain 4 black mana. One more land gets tapped to help pay for Sidisi and De Vizier, and as she enters, Nick exploits a token. This lets him go and tutor for a card, and he finds it and shuffles up. Moving to combat, he hits Max for 2 with Ephemia, and becomes the Monarch. He moves to his end step, exiling an enchantment with his commander's ability, making a token, and then draws from the Monarch. He then has to discard two cards to get down to seven. I draw and play a Temple of the False God. I count up my power, tapping four mana to help cast Galta. I then tap the rest of my mana for Traverse the Outlands, which Max apparently has a problem with. He activates Profane Procession, exiling Galta, which means I sadly only get three basics. I take this very personally, and I pass turn. At the end of my turn, Martin flashes out Archangel Abyssin. Martin draws and plays a Plains. He then enchants Abyssin with a Flicker form, and passes to Max. Max gets yet another Assassin token on his upkeep, and draws, playing a land in his main phase. He casts Chromatic Lantern for turn, and one assassin hits Nick for one to get him back the crown. He then passes, drawing at the end of turn. Nick plays an Urborg as his land drop, and that makes the coffers very happy. He activates it for six, and casts Obnixilis Reignited. He upticks the Planeswalker, losing one life to draw a card, and then casts Skeletal Grimace onto his commander. He swings his commander again at max, dealing three this time, and taking back the Monarch token. He then does his end of turn cycle, exiling enchantment for a token, and drawing from the Monarch. I untap, and play a rootbound crag in my main phase. We then see a Garuk Wildspeaker come out, who I uptick to untap some lands. Moving to combat, I use Nyeth's ability to double its power after paying the appropriate amount of mana. I then pass through my phases into my second main phase, and now activate the Moss Warp Bridge. This lets me cast Perforos Bronze Blooded, and I pass to Martin. Martin plays out of Plains, and drops Pine Harmonicon. 
he passes, and at the end of turn, Max exiles Ephemia with the procession, but Nick has the commander go to the command zone instead. Max gets an assassin token on his upkeep, and moves to his main phase, casting the Sword of the Anime. He gets to attach it for free to a token thanks to the Hammer of Nizan, and he swings said token at Nick, going to find a basic from the sword trigger, and Nick blocks with a zombie token. Max then passes, and at the end of turn, Nick loses one life as he taps the Underworld Connections to draw him a card. Nick draws for turn, and activates the Coffers, which he uses some of to help recast his commander. He then uses the three remaining to play out Feast on the Fallen, and upticks Obnixilis to lose one life and draw a card. He goes to his end step, exiling another enchantment with his commander to make a 2-2 zombie token, then draws from the Monarch trigger, and then discards down to 7. I untap, draw, and look at my top card with Rata's ability. I play Homeward Path as my land for turn, and I rearrange my mana into piles, but really don't want to run anything out because of the procession. I then uptick Garuk and pass turn. Martin Stern has him playing Command Tower, and he casts an Angel of Condemnation. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Max uses the Profane Procession to try and exile Avacyn, but Martin activates Flicker Form when she's targeted to save her. Max gets his Assassin token and draws for turn. He pays two mana for a Pure Steel Paladin, and then plays out Sunforger. He equips the Sunforger onto the geared up Assassin, and remembers to draw from the Paladin trigger. He then comes in hot at Nick, who strangely puts his commander in front as a blocker. Nick then flashes out Blessing of Leeches onto his commander, and pays the zero to Regenerator. Max then moves to his second main phase, and moves to equip the Hammer onto the Paladin. Responding to this, I activate my Ulvenwald Tracker to have Rata fight the Paladin. This takes it out, and Max then pays to equip the Hammer onto Marquesa, and passes. At the end of turn, Nick loses one as he activates his connections to draw a card. Nick loses one in his upkeep to the Blessing of the Leeches, and plays a Swamp in his main phase. He activates the Coffers, and casts Extinguish All Hope. Responding to this, Max activates the Sunforger, removing it from the Assassin, and going to find a spell. He decides to grab Swords to Plowshares, exiling Ephemia, and then a lot of stuff gets blown up. Timurid is able to stick around though, as does Marquesa. Nick then upticks off Nixilis, losing one life and drawing a card, and recasts his commander using some of the floating mana that remains. Timurit finally sees some action as he hits me. On my upkeep, Nick gets a feast trigger, putting a plus one plus one counter onto his commander. I then draw and play my Hanor Battlements as my land drop. I play an Apex Allosaur, aka Phytosaur, and it fights Ephemia and a zombie token. I then swing it because Perforos gives it haste at Nick to get the Monarch token, and I pass, drawing at the end of turn. Martin untaps and draws. His turn is very fast as he plays a Mirror March and passes to Max. Max makes his token in his upkeep and casts a Sun Titan. He brings back the Pure Steel Paladin and suits up the Assassin with the Sword and the Sun Forger. He then goes to combat, smacking Garuk for lethal. He finds a tap basic from the sword trigger, and passes. Nick taps his Underworld Connection Swamp at the end of turn to lose one life, and draw a card. Nick down takes Obnixilis in his main phase to take out my Phytosaur, and activates the coffers for some mana. He casts Read the Bones, Scrying 2, then Bottoming 2, then Drawing 2, and Losing 2. He uses the rest of the coffers mana plus a Swamp to help bring in a Meteor Golem, which comes in and blows up the Hammer of Nizan. We then see a Crypt Breaker hit the field, and Timurid hits me for two. Nick then gets the Monarch back, and passes at the end of turn, drawing. I draw, and play a land. I'm basically under the thumb of Max's Profane Procession at this point, and unfortunately, I can't really do much, so I pass. 
Martin draws, and plays Castle Embreth. He pays 4 mana for Perforos, and then taps 5 for Azelis Conscripts. It enters, and Martin gets a whole whack of triggers. The first is that he targets the Sun Titan and Obnixilis with the Conscript triggers, which will resolve last. He then puts his two Perforos triggers on next, and moves to resolve the Mirror March first. He gets to flip twice, or in this case roll, but he fails the first and passes the second. The second copy then gets him two more, and as a result, we go through the process several times and he ends up with five extra token copies of the Zealous Conscripts, each of which get to steal two permanents and trigger Perforos twice. This deals 24 damage to each of his opponents, and he gets to steal basically every creature he can. Max responds to the targets by floating some mana, and Nick also taps his connections to lose one life and draw a card. We then resolve the Perforos triggers, which has Nick dying and Max and I getting very low. Martin then steals all the creatures, and he isn't finished putting out a fanatic of Mogus, and I know him all but dead. Max responds using the floating mana to activate the Sunforger because he technically controls it even if he currently doesn't control the creature. He goes to find a spell and realizes quickly that he doesn't have a Teferi's protection in there, which means Martin wins. Game review time! So a valuable lesson was learned this day, and that was first and foremost, is to kill Martin. If that is not applicable, at the very least do not allow him to have Mirror March on the field for more than one second. All that being said, it was a pretty sweet win, and he didn't actually win with a combo, just a lot of value. I'm not entirely sure what Max's Snapdax deck was trying to do, but I get the impression that he tried to build up a big creature, and then put Snapdax onto it, and then swing for lethal. Nick's Ephemian deck was certainly not something I was expecting, and it seemed to run a lot of commons and uncommons, but to great effect. A lot of the enchantments he runs seem to be one-time usages, so being able to exile them later on and turn them into 2-2 bodies isn't bad, especially when you do it for free. If you watched the last Garage game, you saw me play Phylath, and in that game I struggled to find lands. Well, unfortunately, I took another Gruul deck out, and in this case, I only found lands. I was drawing so many of them early on that when I cast Galta into Traverse the Outlands, I was really hoping to thin the deck, but Max had other plans. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.